My dear brothers and sisters, I bring you grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've talked about this before, but um, here at St. Philip the Deacon, our worship life, uh, in terms of our readings from the Bible at least, is centered around something called the lectionary, which is a three-year cycle that takes us through most of the Bible uh, over three years. It's the way most Christians throughout the world worship. Um, every week, with some exceptions, uh, there are four readings. There's an Old Testament reading, there's a reading from a psalm, there's a New Testament reading, and there's a gospel reading. Uh, and most weeks, it's very obvious uh, which of those is sort of the prominent one. Uh, here at St. Philip the Deacon, by the way, we pick two of those for our worship life together. Um, typically, the gospel is the driving uh, reading, and that's the one that we usually preach on. Um, this past week, though, as I was reading all of the passages, I was struck by how it's sort of a, an embarrassment of riches. Um, the psalm that Griffin read for us that you heard comes towards the end of the book of Psalms, and the end of the book of Psalms is this sort of fireworks of praise and glory and thanksgiving to God our Creator, so that's a big reading. Uh, the New Testament reading, uh, which we did not read, is from Revelation towards the very end of the Bible. It's a famous passage about the new heaven and the new earth and how God will be with his people and we will be with God and he will wipe every tear from our eye. I mean, this majestic, beautiful poetry about the hope that all of us long for one day. Um, the, the Acts reading, which during Easter replaces the Old Testament reading, which again, we also did not read, Again, hugely important moment in the life of the early church. The reading from Acts this week is about Peter's revelation through a dream and through some people that he meets that uh, maybe God's love is bigger uh, after the Easter event than Peter recognized. And it's one of the moments in the New Testament when these disciples, who of course were all Jews, uh, realize, well, maybe this grace, this love of God is supposed to be extended to the whole world. So that's a big, major theme in the New Testament, an important reading. Uh, and then we had the gospel for today, which a little confusingly, by the way, uh, is the gospel from right before Jesus' death. And of course, we're during Easter, but in the context of Easter, it really points to the second coming. Um, it's the reading we use on Monday, Thursday. Monday, you remember, comes from the Latin word mandate, because in that reading, Jesus gives us a new commandment or a new mandate to love one another. Also, kind of important. So I'm reading these four readings, and I'm thinking, well, what, what do I want to focus on? I, they're all so amazing. And then I got an email this week that made me sort of rethink how I wanted to approach my message. And rather than be sort of big and grand and, and go to those, one of those four major themes, I, I realized that maybe it would be helpful to go uh, small. And by small, I don't for a moment mean unimportant or insignificant, but I mean sort of um, personal, uh, specific, particular, uh, concrete. And I want to tell you a short story about, uh, I think, one of the ways that God's love flows out from this place when we gather to praise God, as the psalm, psalm reminds us today, when we gather to be reminded of our eternal hope with a God who loves us, when we come here repeatedly to be reminded that maybe God's love is bigger than we could ever realize, and we practice imperfectly, but we practice God's or Jesus' commandment to love one another. So I'm going to tell you one example of, in maybe an unexpected way, this is not the kind of thing that you will find on the cover of our newsletter, um, but I got this email, and, and it, it, strangely enough, again, it's sort of unexpected, it involves our sign on County Road 6. You've all seen our sign on County Road 6. Um, and our, our sign on County Road 6, uh, we put up, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, um, and it has very simple messages on it, usually from the Bible. Uh, sometimes it'll have our website or our worship times. Maybe it promotes an upcoming event. We do not go in here for the punny kind of humor that you see at some churches. I'm not opposed to it, but that's just sort of not how we roll with our church sign. Um, anyway, a few months ago, 
I got a note, and by the way, I have permission to share this story, uh, although the names have been left out to protect the innocent. Um, actually, there's nothing wrong with the story. It's a beautiful story. So a few months ago, I, it was actually, I didn't even get this email. Someone sent a, an email to our generic email address at, at church. It's info at spdlc.org, which goes to a handful of us on staff, including me. So here's what the email said. Again, this is a few months ago. Again, and I, right, this is an example, I think, of how a place like this, practicing God's invitation to love, ends up unintentionally spilling out that love in ways that we could never predict. She says, good afternoon. I'm not a member of your church, nor am I Lutheran, but I frequently pass by your church and read the Be Still message. Have you, some of you seen the Be Still on the sign? But, and that, not that it matters, but it comes from Psalm 46, Be Still and Know That I Am God. Um, it's one of my favorite short verses from the Psalms. Psalm 46 happens also to be uh, the psalm that Martin Luther used as the basis of the hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God which is not a particularly still hymn, but that's another subject. Anyway, uh, I frequently pass by your church and read the Be Still message on your outdoor display. As someone who suffers from anxiety, this message really resonates with me and has been very therapeutic. I just wanted to thank you for that refreshing message. All the best. Lovely, right? So I responded and I said, you know, thank you very much uh, for taking the time to write. I'm glad the message has been meaningful for you. We've actually, in all seriousness, we've heard that from some other people, including some people who live in the um, apartments next to us. But it's always good to hear positive feedback and I'm grateful you took the time to write, right? I don't think anything else of it. This week, while I'm reading these four glorious, majestic passages for, assigned for, for worship this weekend, I get this. And this time it's, it's uh, sent to me. Hello, Pastor Tim. I hope this email finds you well. I emailed you several months ago thanking you for your Be Still message, and I wanted to thank you for continuing to post this uplifting message. In fact, it inspired me so much that I had a ring made with the message, Be Still and Know That I Am God, in Hebrew, which is, of course, the original language of the Psalms, I've attached a picture, which she did. And it's a beautiful, beautiful ring with, again, that Bible verse from Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. And then I, I said, gosh, it's gorgeous. I'm, I'm glad that the message continues to resonate. Um, and thanks again for taking time to let us know. So there is a woman wandering, she's not wandering the streets of Minneapolis, but <laughs> <laughs> out there somewhere. She's never been here, by the way. I don't, I don't know if she'll ever visit our church. Uh, you know, I don't think she has any intention of joining her or anything. But she's out there going to work every day, carrying on her life with a ring on her finger, reminding her of God's love, uh, helping her to be centered in times of stress, helping her to realize that God is present with her, and it's all because of this congregation. So would you concede with me that we, collectively, through our sign, have changed and transformed her life? Yes, I would agree. So here's my question for you. If that love of God, which, again, is reflected in so many beautiful ways in the four readings, uh, in a community like this, is so powerful that even someone driving past this church in their car can be changed. How much more are we all being changed by being here today, part of this community? And if that sounds to you like it's either presumptuous or prideful, if you think to yourself, well, I know myself reasonably well, I don't feel like I'm being changed too much because I know, you know, I still have some issues. I'm reminded of a, a true story. Uh, <laughs> of a, this is the oldest line in the book. An atheist uh, says to an older uh, Christian man, well, I don't want to have anything to do with church because it's filled with a bunch of hypocrites. To which the wise old man says, you're right. But if you think they look like hypocrites now, you should have seen what they looked like before they started coming to church. 
So again, we are here today, I'm not saying for a minute that we're perfect or that we are um, without sin or that we're saints. That's not the point. The point is we come here so that God can perfect us, so that God can take away our sin, so that God can sanctify us. And as we come close to the end of another program year, uh, and we approach the summer, which has its own rhythm and so forth, I always find myself looking back over everything that we've accomplished as a congregation in the last year, which is, by the way, far more than as important as that woman is. And I'm delighted that her life was changed by her sign. There are a thousand other things we could talk about. And so as we come to the end of this program year, I just want to say thank you for being the kind of people who come here week in and week out and are vulnerable enough to acknowledge our brokenness and our weakness and allow God to change us. Because it is through that transformation, I believe with all my heart, that the world itself is changed and transformed. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Good and gracious God, we thank you today for calling us into your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to praise you. We thank you for the reminder of eternal life with you. We thank you for the challenge to be reminded that your love is bigger than we can imagine and the new commandment that we try, at least, to love one another. We pray that you will continue to help us be changed and transformed so that together we can change the world you love. In all this we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen.